back, don't cross no cameras. Phil, go that way. Phil, get way. another chair. Over this side, Wings. Now that's set. This is <laughs> Grandma. <laughs> okay, guys, as, as we uh, Grandma. Mama Haney. Grandma. Mama Haney. Hi, that's my that's my mom right there. Hey, Grandma. She's. Yeah. How are you? Good to see you again. All right. Good to Everybody see you. was praying for my mom. Good to see you. Good to see Everybody you. was praying for my mom. Thank you. Continue yeah. to keep us in your prayers. You know what I'm saying? She yeah. made it. Go, Grandma. 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 Well, everybody, uh, welcome to Team Haney coming in and uh, an incredible night at the Chase Centre. 16,000 people in the Bay Area for the first time in over two decades to see one of their own become a two-division world champion in a masterclass performance. Over to the media for questions for Bill and Devin after an incredible night. How was it fighting in front of your hometown, the Bay Area, in front of your friends, your family, your grandma, becoming a champion? Yeah, um, alhamdulillah, you know, it was a, a blessing, a dream come true. I, I've always dreamed of uh, this, these moments, and uh, the time came, and uh, the Bay Area came out and supported me. So, uh, you know, um, thank you to everybody that came out. What's next for you? I don't know. Um, you know, I want to talk with my dad. Um, and uh and see what's next but um you know i, I want to do a fight at 147 um but it's a lot of big fights at 140 but i'm in i'm into you know making the biggest you know best fights happen uh in the sport of boxing that's where i'm at in it that's where i'm at in it right now um you know i, I became undisputed at uh 140 i mean 135 135 and uh you know i made history and you know i'm in history books forever but now you know i want to make the, the biggest fights happen for you know um the most money, to be honest. Who at 140 you want to fight? You want to up against? You mean at 147? Um, I don't know. You know, I want to talk to my dad. Um, my dad has, you know, been looking at the 147 pound landscape. Um, so you would, you would, you would have to ask him. Bill, who do you want to be? What's next, Bill? Chance. Hey. Fight at 147. Um, first of all, I want to thank Allah, you know, for making this all happen. Um. Devin is remarkable, man. He's truly special. Uh, and take nothing away from the guys at 130, 140, 147. Um, but when, I, when we talk about them, they're good. But Devin is special, and I think he showed that tonight, um, his ability to handicap a fighter. Um, whatever the fighter does special, you guys won't get a chance to see it against Devin because uh, that's just the kind of fighter he is. Um, and uh, as far as 147 pounds, um, when looking at legacy, and so many people uh, right now um, tarnish the sport of boxing by saying belts don't matter, um, we look to, to continue uh, being le a legacy, uh, Devin being a legacy fighter, uh, 147. He, he went up from 135 and challenged 147, 140 pound WBC champion, and he has the ability to go up and be a three division world champion and undisputed at 25. And I think that that's, uh, that's a Hall of Fame statement, and um, that's that's one of the options that's on there. He's he's creating, um, you know, he's just he's 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 something special, man. So I can't say nothing about him. Bill. Kevin, uh, congratulations on the win on another achievement. Thank you. A record was broken tonight, and fewest punches landed in a title fight. Regis only landed 38, which was previously said by Edwin De Los Santos. Obviously, this <laughs> just goes to show uh, your skills. Want your thoughts on uh, the phenomenal performance? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, that's a good record to, you know, set. Um, you know, that was part of the game plan was, you know, go in there and handicap him, you know, uh, of, of his best, you know, his best things. And his best his best thing was was his left hand. That was his bread and butter. And uh, we took it off the table. And uh, I don't even think he landed that many punches. What was it, 38? I don't, I, I don't remember, you know, him even landing that many. So, um, yeah. Were you surprised it was that easy? No, I wasn't surprised. I knew that if I went in there and stuck to the game plan and uh, I was in there disciplined, and um, it, it it would work out, but like I said, I I knew that I was levels uh, above him, and these guys, uh, I'm levels above them. But you know, I was 
killing myself to make 135 so much. So you know, I would get into a fight. I would get go into the fight and I would be you know depleted. I wouldn't be my best self. So now you know I'm able to to go in there and uh, be the, the the real Devin Haney. Devin, Devin, Devin Garcia with fight hype. You know, um, <coughs> there was a lot of build up for this fight. There was you know a lot of talk on both sides. But after, like you said, you know uh, you anticipated Regis coming up to you and your victory. What were some of those words that he shared with you? What are some of the things you guys exchanged in that ring after the fight? Um, no, he he told me that I was that I was like super fast and super sharp. Um, and that was that was it. But I want to talk to Regis. I wanted to, you know, tell him. Oh, I told him. I told him thank you for the opportunity, and uh, you know, giving me a shot at uh, at the title. For sure. Just one follow up question. Immediately after the fight, champ, um, Ryan got on Twitter. He talked about potentially fighting you. What are your thoughts if you stay at one forty and potentially fighting Ryan Garcia? I think that's a that, that's a possibility. That's a, a a mega fight. Um, you know, I've been calling out Ryan for years now, so it's uh, it's good to hear that you know he finally won a fight. It sucks that it came after you know he took an L, but um, it, I, it was only a matter of time. But uh, he, now he now, now he finally won to you know call me out. But at the end of the day, it's still a big fight, and uh, like I said, I'm willing to make the, the I want to make the best fights, biggest fights happen. Was so he calling you? Did he call you out, or is he calling for clout? Because he got your number. Yeah, no, nah, for did, sure. Huh? Yeah, no, nah, I mean, you know what I mean, why are you talking to them? You know what I mean? It's crazy. I seen Ryan like, yeah. uh, like maybe like right before I went into training camp. He didn't say nothing about fighting me. So, um, no, no, I literally, I literally, literally was shopping in LA. We ran into each other at the store. He didn't say nothing about fighting. Devin, for round six, did you know how bad you had him hurt? Um, honestly, I don't remember. You know which round I knew. That, I knew that I had him hurt a few times. Um, but I don't re really remember what round it was. But yeah, I do remember. You know, getting him hurt. Yeah, no. Nah, um, I was going back to the corner. I, I I wanted to I wanted to fight. I knew that I, I knew that I could hurt him. I knew that I was that I was hurting him. But every round, you know, my dad my dad would. I went back to the corner. My dad would say, "Just stay focused. Keep st sticking to the game plan. You beat him easy. Keep breaking him down." And uh, that's what I was doing. You know, in the in in a, and it comes with experience in the Lenares fight. I was breaking him down. He was going down fast, but I got too greedy and. Um, you know that's that that's what I got hit with a shot that I shouldn't have got hit with. So in this fight, you know, with, with the experience, you know, we just stuck to the game plan. And uh, if the knockout was to come, then it was going to come. But uh, we didn't want to get too greedy. Devin, talk about your power. Talk about your power and just like you said, you heard him a couple times. You dropped him. Obviously, you know, he he was saying that you know you you didn't have the power and mm -hmm. uh, more points. Yeah, no. I, like I said, at 135, I was depleting myself so much and. Um, you know, I couldn't understand how I was hurting, you know, guys in the gym, you know, every sparring session. But I get into a fight and uh, it, my power wouldn't be there. But it was because I was just depleting myself so much, killing myself to make the weight that I was leaving it all, you know, in the gym. Um, and this fight, you know, I showed I wasn't even, you know, trying to, you know, punch hard. And, and, and I was hurting him, knocking him down. And, and I knocked him down and, and stuff like that. Champ, you've been lauded for your skills, obviously, and like you just said, power has been a thing that some people try to knock you on. What do you think this fight, what kind of state in the sense of the rest of the division in terms of your power and some of the guys who have thought? No, I mean, I just showed that, that, that I got it all. I got, you know, I got the power, the speed, everything. It just depends on what I want to do. Mike, what's your question? Uh, um, you know, on performance. Thank you. Performance. Look, I've heard all the critics say that you don't have power, you can't take a punch. Mm -hmm. Say to them now. Like I said, I'm a complete fighter, you know, they, they but they gonna always say something. Um, you know, um the first they said I couldn't sell, then, you know, I just sold I just sold out, you know, sixteen, seventeen thousand. They said I didn't have no power. I went in there and I dropped them early, hurt them multiple times. Um, what they gonna say now? Devin, uh, and congrats on a superb performance. Thank you. Um, you and T.O. are now the, the top two guys in the division. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? When I ask him about it, he kind of laughs it off. What are your thoughts on that fight? I want to make the biggest, best fights happen. Uh, if we can make the fight happen and uh, and, we, then, and it makes sense, then we can make the fight happen. Like I said, the, I the biggest you. fights for the most money. Yeah, I wanted to ask you a question. I want, I'll take my answer from either you or Bill. Tank made a reference saying, well, it should be sold out because you had tickets for this amount of money and that amount of money. I just wanted to 
Tank Tank don't want to fight because uh, if he really wanted to fight, then he would be trying to build up the fight instead of instead of trying to not, you know knock it down or you know try to you know say oh I'm only selling because of this or because of that. If he really wanted to fight me, he would you know be making it that you know it's it's a big fight and you know it's the best fight for boxing. But you know he uh, he only talked talk down on the fight but like I said many times they say everything but let's fight nobody um has out did Devin um you know in terms of Tank's dance partners um you know you don't you don't have to down the other fighter to um to validate what you are and what you bring to the table uh Tank um and his team have consistently lied uh to the people they created this narrative that because you make money or because you charge the people some astronomical money for a fight that you know that the guy is going to lose because um, obviously the um, – what is it when the bet the betting line? The betting line doesn't even reflect um, as much money as the, that the guy is charging. So talk the message to all the fans, stop letting Tank – and this team piss on your head and tell you it's rain with these with these fights, these insignificant fights. You know what I mean? The saying is for the culture. Devin represents the culture and represents boxing and what boxing should be and what boxing is. Hey, the lady, the little lady with the braids. Next. <laughs> Uh, Belzy Wellsy, uh, yeah, um, you know, I went in there and I was real disciplined. Um, I made it easy as possible. You've seen some of my infamous sparring sessions. So you tell me, do you think that it was a sparring session? <laughs> How much longer do you think until your number one pound for pound? Um, I don't know. You know, I put it in Allah's hands. You know, um, I'm not rushing nothing. I'm still young. Don't down and crown it. 25 years old, um, it's only a matter of time, you know, inshallah, I'll be number one on that pound for pound list, but uh, I'm moving, I'm climbing the ladder, I'm, 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 you know. No other fighter has done what Devin has done, crossing the pond to become undisputed, coming up um, to another division and fighting the hard-hitting, arguably no one, um, you know, the boogeyman, uh, no one was wanted to fight. Um, he's the number one fighter right now, pound for pound. I know, not and it's no slight towards Terrence Crawford's performance, but if, if Errol Spence was depleted and he has to go up to 55, for how much fucking credit can we give him for that fight? And um, you know, I feel like I feel like I'm, you know, at this point that I should be fighter of the year. Um, but 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 also but also but not only that, not not only that, you know, they they don't want to give my dad credit, but I think my dad deserved credit uh, trainer of the year. Um. You know they they when when they when when they mentioned the the, the best trainers uh, uh, in boxing, I don't I don't understand I don't understand because they never mentioned my dad, but he is the best trainer in boxing, and it show it showed. Look look at look we just went in there, went up in weight, you know, uh, and and fought arguably the best at 140 and pitched a shutout, didn't even get hit with nothing, handicapped him. Come on now, my dad deserved trainer of the year, and I deserve fighter of the year. talking about 47 and you just mentioned the Crawford comparison is that a fight even us worth thinking about Haney and Crawford at 47 if Terrence I mean he's going to rematch Fed but if he were to come back at 47 you know what my nickname for for Devin is Superman you know and um anything is possible um but let's 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 move this thing the way that it's supposed to move and give him credit for this fight tonight and then but don't look at an um like a far-fetched possibility of him going up to 47. He's the boss. He'll get a chance to decide. Of course, Eddie will, will do uh, his best to put things on the table. Uh, we'll strategize and give Devin a chance to look at it. Um, but, I mean, I keep hearing this Ryan Garcia shit. Is that real, Eddie, or what? I mean, it's come from Oscar, which doesn't necessarily mean it's real. Um, <laughs> but Ryan said so as well. But, listen, that's, that's a great fight. You know, I think Ryan should be chasing the champions at 140. He should be chasing the number one in the division. And Devin's the number one in the division. So, you know, I, I do think, looking back, I think people don't quite understand what Devin used to do to make 135. Like when I used to work with him, before he had to go over the other side and, and rob the bank, um, 
<laughs> he was done at 135, and he went on to have three more fights at 135. Two of them was traveling to the other side of the world to make weight, which I think is, is an incredible achievement. And he's right. He, what, he, there is no way he could have fulfilled the potential he had as a fighter at 135. And I think for years and years, like we chased a Ryan Garcia fight. No one wanted to fight Devin Haney. And everyone used the excuse. When you've got a really good fighter, everyone uses the excuse. Oh, they just don't sell. It's not a big enough fight. No one knows who he is. But he's actually gone to Australia, become undisputed, come back. You know, those fights that he had beat Lomachenko. Now he's sold out in a, in a city that hasn't had boxing for two decades. Who else can do that in boxing? Eddie, you remember when you told me, you said uh, it was me and you, you said... I just think he might be too good, mate. <laughs> that, that, but that's what, you know what? But when you're too good, the only way you can entice people is by making sure they get paid to get beat. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So that's what happens. So now people are seeing the draw. People are seeing the size of Devin Haney, maybe even Ryan Garcia and going, you know what? That's a big fight. So if I get beat, I get paid. Does every fighter that he fight get their biggest payday? Yep. So you see? And we have a, a strong team uh, like Matchroom and Eddie behind us in the zone. So you see every fighter gets their biggest payday, but then there's not the line around the corner. Devin is truly the best fighter on the planet, and um, I'm so happy. It's a, a, a funny thing, too. It's a funny story. Um, you know, I wasn't. I got a message from Oscar um, yesterday, Oscar De La Hoya, and um, I was surprised. He wished me luck. He said, he's, you know, he, he said, good luck, you know, do your thing. And I scrolled up. I looked at the message before, and the message said, "I told him to fuck off." <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was it, 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 it was funny, but uh, I told him, you know, thank you, you know, him being a legend and him wishing me luck in this fight. Bill, Devin, uh, Aaron told to uh, on for TV here in San Francisco. Absolutely. Uh, was fighting here at the Chase Center part of that bucket list on your master plan of your career? And did it exceed your expectations? And what did you think about the overall? Experience? Yeah, no, um, definitely was on my bucket list. When we, when I was talking with Eddie um, about you know where we could do the fight, it was uh, it was either here or um, where was the other place? Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta, Atlanta. Yeah, those were two places. But um, I was like, I know that I know that the Bay would, would come out and support. Um, I think we should do it there. And Eddie said, you know, I'm up for it. Let's let, let's see. Let's let's do it. And I asked Eddie. I said, yes. Uh, day before yesterday, I said, Eddie, how many people did you think I was going to bring out? He said. Mate, 7,000? <laughs> he said, I'm not going to lie to you, 7,000? I said, 7,000? <laughs> but uh, we, did, we, we did a great job, and uh, we sold it out. And uh, we're going to bring back some uh, more fights, inshallah. Are you more proud of yourself knowing that this is not a boxing city, it's not Vegas, it's not L.A.? Mm -hmm. You're still able to pack the, crowd, uh, the seats in the Chase Center? 100%. You know, the Bay Area is behind me. All my people came out, uh, my day ones. And, uh, no, for sure, I'm happy with, with the turnout. Yeah, no, no, for sure. God willing, inshallah, you know, we, we, we do more fights here, more big events, um, possibly the next. My, my two places that I want to fight is either, you know, Saudi Arabia or back here. Yeah, uh, notice there in the ring walk, you're very serious, not the typical smile. Mm -hmm. uh, why was that? Just focused? Yeah, no, nah, I was locked in. Um, you know, he said a lot. And uh, I was ready for for whatever, you know. Um, I was just, you know, the, the the whole the whole day I've been locked in, entering the arena, you know, to 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 the walkout. I was I was ready, and it felt a little different, you know, walking uh, walking first. <laughs> but uh, we we're not gonna have that problem. No time soon. Again. We, we had to, we, hey, look, we had to we had to get a routine. <laughs> no, that's funny because you know we're so used to um, saying. Um, um, and and still, you know, mm -hmm. it was getting used to and saying and knew. And then um, to come out first, you know, me and Devin, we didn't have our necessarily our routine together. <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of improvised, but we my, did good. <laughs> my dad said, um, uh, Regis was walking out. My dad said, don't worry about him. Don't worry about him. <laughs> don't worry about him. Don't even look at him. Don't even look at him. He said, when you turn around, look at him. But all that other shit, don't even don't look at him. But he was, he was doing his walk out and doing all his shit. And I said, don't worry about him. Don't worry about him, what he's doing. <laughs> Bill, you had a very, Team Amy had a very good night. You had a good night on the undercard as well. Oh, yeah. Talk about oh. that says for you as a trainer, not simply working with your son, but now 
the rest of your stable. Oh, most, thank you, Queen, for pointing that out. Um, shout out to our, our team who did a tremendous job, uh, Shamar Canal and uh, Amari Jones. Um, you know what I mean? Just, yeah. Yeah, so both, both Shamar um, made New York proud and, of course, Amari, a uh, hometown um, guy. You saw everyone was saying, you know, his name and everything. He's, he's made us and the city quite proud, and uh, we expect um, some big things from them as well, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, this is all part of my, you know, my father's plan. Um, you know, I'm just following protocol. Couple more guys. Did Last Amari two. Jones' victory and the way he did it inspire you to do yours even better? Yeah, no, I told Amari. I told Amari. I said, uh, I said, he, he just told me in a, in a lock uh, in a locker room when I was getting dressed after the fight. He said, uh, he said, I'm proud of you. I said, no, I'm proud of you. You motivated me when you went in there and knocked him out, and you did everything that you said you was going to do. That motivated me. That that gave me that extra push. But uh, that's what we, that that just explains our relationship, me and Amari Jones. You know, we we push each other. We push you. That's my twin for real. That's my twin for real. You know, every day in and day out, we push we we push each other in in, in everything we do. And uh, you know, I, it's a testament to his his work ethic. No matter what time it could be, three, four in the morning or whatever, I tell him, "Hey, Marlon, let's run." He get up every time, never complain, never nothing. And we finna do three workouts today. Okay, he 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 he's with it. And um, you know, not many fighters, you know, on, on that's in the building stage is is you know willing to do that. You know, it's. It's different when you're fighting for you know millions and millions of dollars, and you and, and that's your motivation. But he's in part he's a part of the building stage, and um, you know he's he's the future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last, you last, 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 yeah. had two fights now this year. You had two fights last year. And I think pretty much all of the years in recent memory. When do you want to be back? And what's your plan for next year? Yeah, um, I just want to take some time off. You know, spend some time with the with the family. Um, you know, I had a hard training camp. I've been in training camp for, you know, in, the, in training camp for 10 weeks. But before that, I was training. And uh, I've been very disciplined and, you know, focused. So uh, I just want to take some time off and just rest and relax, let my body recover. Um, but um, before I leave, I want to give a, you know, a special happy birthday to my chef nutritionist, James Lockwood. You know, uh, he's, he's, he's done a tremendous job with me time and time again, fight after fight. Ever since he came, you know, my fights have been getting easier. My weight cuts have been getting easier, you know. Um, he's the best at what he do. I'm the best at what we do. You know, we the dream team, you know, undisputed nutrition, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the build-up for this fight, we just made it a point to say you wasn't from here. And he stated that when he was running, people was chanting him on to beat you. But during the fight, we heard the crowd numerous occasions chanting your name. How did that feel? Man, I'm just a private school kid, man. That's all, 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 that's all man. That's it. That's all I can say. Dev, uh, obviously during camp, I know uh, you lost a team member, saw the, the picture of you and Tommy Smalls in the locker room. Uh, how much motivation was that and, you know, obviously dedicating the fight to him? Yeah, um, you know, in the beginning of camp, I lost, you know, somebody that was, you know, super close to me that was that was living with me, you know, Tommy Smalls. And, um, you know, it 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 really hurt me. I was I was I was going through through it, you know, um, you know, I was still working out and still, you know, but, you know, I was it, it, it was a tough time for me. But, you know, eventually I just. You know, use it as motivation, and I just remember everything that 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 he would tell me. You know, his his voice would would you know play, you know, in my head, and uh, you know, I definitely this victory is is for him. I wish he was here, but um, we 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 will meet again. You know, um, inshallah. Last question, Andy. Andy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, the, you know, we've always been in conversations, and Bill has, and Devin has, with, with Saudi Arabia. Obviously, there's a, a tremendous movement there now with His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh. I, I spoke to him tonight, actually, um, and you know, he knew I was here. He was watching. He posted about Devin as well tonight, and you know, he wants to bring the best fighters to Saudi Arabia, and. As you've seen, there's not many better than Devin Haney right now. So, you know, I feel like uh, 2024 Saudi Arabia is definitely on the destination list for, for Devin Haney. 
Ladies and gentlemen, great performance. Two division world champion, Devin Haney.